we got to, you know, this social media is here to stay. It's not going anywhere. But we have to make sure we're using it correctly, especially with our families. Listen, you came down here. I don't know why you came down here. I'm hoping you came because you felt the word of God was going forth at ABC. And you wanted to be a part of a move of God and all those great things. I get it. But if you left in bad standing with your family, you need to make sure you make that right. Amen. Amen. Even if they told you, don't come, don't you go down there to that cult and you have to go against them and come anyway, still make it right with them. Learn how to have common ground, get along. Because if you have that in your heart where you are against them or that's in there, then you're going to turn against this ministry. A bad family member is a bad church member. Because a church is a family. Amen. So if you used to dogging out your mama, dogging out your daddy, your brothers and sisters, and always talking bad about family, then you're going to do the same thing with people in here. Yeah. So look at somebody and say, get it right. Get it right. Avenge not. Adamantbeliever.com forward slash avenge not. Dot PDF. You already know where this message is going. Amen. We are living in a time where people are gaining popularity, being applauded, and getting paid to slander, gossip, and attack one another. You can get paid. If you get enough likes and views, you can get a $20 check. Folks will sell their mama out for $20. You done got online and put all your mama's business, all she didn't do, all the, how you feel about her, you all this, you done put that online and Meta going to send you a check for $23. Yeah. And you feel good for a while because people will come in, yeah, my mama did the same thing. Yeah, my dad, yeah, I understand. Girl, that's right. They be doing, they try, and then after that thread, it's gone. You got 15 minutes. After your 15 minutes is gone, you're going to be sitting up one night and the devil's going to walk in your room laughing. Look what you did. You can't go on there and get it off. Folks done got it. And you let everybody in. You let it out and can't get it back. It's like water. That's your mama. Your father, it's your sister, your brother, that's your friend. That's somebody that was there for you when nobody was there for you. Yeah, somebody gave you money in some cases, helped you out, fed you, took care of you when you were sick. You got angry and went out and let it out. Yeah, and the devil's going to laugh because you can't get it back. Yeah. So we got to be careful, people. Look at somebody and say, be careful. Don't try to gain popularity for that. And don't try to be applauded for that. And don't try to get that little check because it's a little check. It's a tiny check. Hope, I'm, I'm telling you, y'all, ain't nobody in that. Amen. Unless you become Wendy Williams or Shannon Sharp or somebody. But man, look at the life they have to live after they do it. Wendy Williams used to talk everybody's business, personal business. Who's sleeping with who and who cheated on who and who. Remember her radio? She was doing that all those years. And fate struck her body and destroyed her quality of life. Because the Bible said don't suffer as a busybody in other men's matters yeah yeah man yeah man it's coming back Mark 13 and 12 says now the brother shall betray the brother to death and the father the son and children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death this is describing the day of the Lord or the end times 
children rising up against their parents. Brother against brother. Betraying each other. And father and son. Yeah, this is the time we are in right now. Instead of working out issues privately and being discreet when it comes to loved ones, close friends, and family, the popular thing to do is to take the social media to air out grievances. Now, let me explain something to you. When you go to a person and talk to them, that's you talking to a person. When you put it online, that's you talking to the world. It's the World Wide Web. Not only are you talking to the world, but you're talking to every demon that's on there. You are affecting a lot of things. Look at somebody say, be responsible. Man, you, and you be knowing. You had that post ready. Oh, I'm going to fire this off and your heart start beating fast. Your vision get blurry. Your hands start shaking. You can barely push the button. If all of that is happening, you might need to think about that. You might need to reread it a couple of times. Think about it. The best thing to do is call somebody. Amen. Call somebody you trust. Call Jay Bryant. <laughs> he good at that. <laughs> For real. Text him and say, hey, man, I'm going to put this post up. What do you think? And I've had several members do that here. And I thank y'all. They sent it to me. Say, hey, pastor, what do you think about that? I say, hey, I wouldn't put that up. And most of them didn't. The ones that did, family broke apart. Shouldn't have done it. And don't send it to me and ask me what I think and you ain't going to listen. That's just boneheaded. Yeah, but you got to be careful not to air out grievances the wrong way. Social media is the wrong way. It's never right. It was never God's will for you to wake up and let everybody know what you're thinking. That's immaturity. That's immaturity. That means you need attention. Oh, today I think I'm gonna. Who cares? You need a puppy. A parrot. Get a parrot. It'll talk back. Ah, stupid. Get a... Get a parrot that was raised up in the projects. He'll tell you. Ark! <laughs> Using the N word and everything. Get one of them parrots. <laughs> Some of y'all, that's y'all's love language. You got to be talked to like that before you hear somebody. Yeah, but don't air out your grief. Look at somebody say, don't air your grievances out. You're married to that person. How you going to get on the internet? You're married. And you going to tell the internet how you feel about that person? And it is something they don't know. I've had people tell me that my husband just put on there that he don't really like me anymore. You told the world that? I'm going to tell you what's just as bad. Y'all, I need prayer for my husband. Why are you putting that online? And all I got to do is click his name and go to his page. <laughs> there has to be some lines here. Amen. There just has to. Amen. Has to. Somebody got to preach this. Amen. There has to be some lines. You can't post everything you feel it. Amen. Amen. Some women now, they you going to stay single because you put too much on, online. We know too much. Some of that stuff you need to surprise somebody with. It's too late. We already married by the time they found that out. You giving everybody the whole story. They can make up their mind about you and don't even know you. Amen. And go back down your timeline and erase the stuff before Jesus. Amen. Why you got the chronicles of your stripping life but God in 1999? <laughs> but God.
God. But before that, it's just but. <laughs> you just chronic. Erase that. Erase it. Amen. Nobody need to know. You got 2,000 pictures of that and two pictures of you getting baptized. <laughs> Clean that page up. Amen. Amen. Just delete it. Nobody needs to know, but that's my testimony. So, that's your testimony. The world don't need to know that. Amen, somebody. Well, I mean, if they can't accept me like I am, shut up. You sound so stupid. Some things don't need to be disclosed to everyone. Amen. The Bible says that the older women should teach the younger women to be discreet. You know what discreet is? Well, I ain't keeping no secrets. You should. You should if you're a real friend. If you really know how to love somebody, you'll keep some things. I know I'm preaching. Amen. Everything, everything that happened in your life don't need to be online. Psalms 1 and 1. Blessed is the man that walketh. This is the internet. This is describing social media. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. That's social media. Nor standeth in the way of sinners. That's social media. Nor sitteth in the what? Seat of the what? You know what the seat of the scornful is? That's the bitter person out in everybody's business online. That's a scorned person. You're sitting in the seat of the scornful making post. The phone's just fighting. Wouldn't fight in real life. Oh, folks be tough behind that phone. Digital fight. Text fight. Inbox fight. That's so weak. Can't come and talk. Can't talk. Man to man talk. Human to human. Amen. Even though the Bible is specific about how to handle grievances and ought against others, many Christians are following the world's example of trying to destroy their family members and loved ones for views and likes. You can feel so down on yourself that you will sacrifice a relationship to feel good for five minutes. Because that's all you get. I said 15, but it's about five. Proverbs 8 12 says, I, wisdom, wisdom is speaking right here. I dwell with prudence. What is prudence? What is prudence? That's considering the future. Wisdom says, I dwell with those that consider the future of their actions. So before I post this, let me think. What might happen? Let me think about the family reunion when this person's going to show up. And I'm going to have to miss so I don't get dusted by the ribs. I'm in line for the red soda. I can't be in that line because I might get whooped. That's prudence. I got to see this person again. Let me be careful what I say. For I get the turkey fork thrown at me at the Thanksgiving table. That, is that not prudence? Yeah, you're considering. Let me play this back. Who all is this going to affect? How is this? Man, this ain't just going to hurt them. This is going to hurt a whole lot of other people. A lot of innocent people. Let me think about this. Let me process this. That's prudence. Wisdom is talking. And wisdom says, I dwell with prudence. And I find knowledge and what? 
and what? Knowledge and what? Discretion. Know when to be discreet. Know when this ain't anything anybody else needs to hear. Amen. When people hurt you emotionally or reject you in any kind of way, you must be careful not to seek revenge or maliciously attack them. Yeah. See, rejection is hard. Rejection is the reason the devil is the devil. The devil is the devil because he was rejected by God. Cain committed the first murder because he was rejected by God. So rejection is probably the worst thing that can happen to a person in this life other than being murdered. When you're rejected. When you're rejected, your whole being, it feels unvalidated. You feel less than someone. And that makes you want them gone. Yeah. Yeah. You got to pray against that spirit. That's the spirit of Satan himself in rejection. It's that powerful. So when you feel like somebody don't want you around, don't want you no more, whatever, whatever, you know, yeah, that's rejection. Yeah. As a wife, don't reject your husband. Husbands, don't reject your wife. Stuff will fill, their hearts will be filled with something where you might not even be able to get them back. Because the devil will come in and mess with them. Make you feel like a rejected one like he feels. Then you open yourself up for all kinds of demons. The worst exorcisms or casting, dealing with demons that I've had to deal with in people were people that the world threw away. Or that someone threw away. Someone rejected them. Most of the time a father rejected them. Or a mother but they get possessed by demons because that's the spirit of Lucifer himself. So that person goes into a dark funk, a depression, a state where they can almost, they struggle to get back to normalcy when they're rejected. Yeah. So when people hurt you and reject you, you got to pray to not seek revenge, not be glad when something bad happens to them. Yeah. Yeah. And you got to pray that. We're all human. Somebody rejects you and then you see them get in trouble. Mm -hmm. It's that long one. Mm -hmm. See what happens when you mess with the man of God? What? You know how you do. You. You know how you do. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to say nothing. You didn't have to say it. Your lips, neck, Chin, all said it. I ain't going to say nothing. <laughs> yeah. Romans 12 and 19 says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. God says, let me handle that. Amen. And one thing God showed me, let me handle it because I made that person. There's nothing you can do to get that person back like God can. God will hit them where it really hurts. You'll hit them where you think it hurts or where it might hurt you. God got a whole different perspective. He can go cellular with it. He can go quantum with it. He's God. We should love our enemies and pray for them. According to the Bible, we should never make sport or try to profit off another person's demise or shame. Amen. You took a check from Meta for talking about your parents online. You need to burn that check. That's blood money. That's the same money that Judas cast down and didn't want no more. Judas tried to give the money to the to the to the people that gave it to him. They say, hey, hey, that's blood money, bro. He's like, it is, isn't it? And went and hung himself. They didn't even use that, but they, they say we can't even put that money in the treasure because it's blood money. We're going to buy a cemetery with it. 
a place for the dead because it's blood money. You getting a check for being a busybody in other men's matters? Can I keep preaching in here? I know I'm telling the truth. Hey. Amen. You don't put your husband out there and got a check for it. Luke 6 and 27. But I say unto you, which here, love your enemies. That just don't taste good, does it? That don't taste good to nobody. Hey, man, you ain't that safe. Oh, that's right. I love loving my enemies. <laughs> you the enemy. Nobody like you. <laughs> yeah, but you got to love. Look at somebody say, love your enemies. Love your enemies. No matter how jive turkey they are. They jive turkey because they're your enemy. But you got to love them. Amen? And then, ooh, you got to do good to them which hate you. And do good don't mean you take them some flowers and buy them some candy. That's not what it's saying. Do good means you don't repay them with evil. In other words, you don't let them change you. Amen. So do good. Keep being you. That's what the devil wants to do. The devil can't do nothing but turn you into him so you'll go to hell. That's all he can do. So he's trying to change the way you are so you will react like he would. The Bible called him the accuser of the brethren. So he wants you out and your spouse, children, everybody online so you'll turn into him and get his punishment. Can I keep preaching? Y'all, the internet wasn't made for that. That's your family. Amen. Call your mama. Tell her how you feel. You know, in psychology, they tell you to just write them a letter and tell them everything you feel, everything you feel, everything you thought growing up, everything, write all of that down. But never give it to them. Tells you to never give it to them. All you needed to do was get it out. You didn't get that to your mama and she fed you when you were hungry. How you gonna get mad at something emotional when she was taking care of you physically? Up all night when you had fever. You, you can't remember that. You were little. Now all of a sudden, amen, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you. As believers, we are to love and lay down our lives for others and give our ought against them to him. How you're feeling about somebody, you need to give that to God. Amen. Somebody, well, that's just cliche because that don't really do nothing. I'm not talking to you. You're not saved. I'm talking to the people that saved. The saved people know that they can cast their cares upon him because he cares for them because the Bible said it. And if you're saved, you believe what the Bible said. I'm not talking to these new age Christians that just, you know, no. I'm talking to the ones that believe the Bible. Bible said cast that on him. Mark eleven twenty five. 25. And when ye stand praying. See, you don't even qualify for this because you don't stand praying. You don't pray. If you don't pray, you, you can't do this. I'm talking to the saved people. Amen. Say, see, you can't be saved and don't pray. You got to talk to God if you're with God. Amen. Every wife in this building should be a prayer warrior. Oh, boy. Yeah, that one was heavy right there. Yeah, you should be a prayer warrior praying for your home and your husband. Yeah. 
I mean, I just don't, I don't know what to say. I don't be knowing what to say. You know why? Because you say it all to him. Some stuff you need to quit saying to him and you need to say it to God. He know you don't like him no more. He know you think he's slow. He know you think he can't make the money. He know you think he can't take care of the house. He knows all of that because you won't shut up. You say it all the time. Something wrong with you. Something got to be wrong with you. Look at everybody else in the church progressing and you ain't done. Yeah. Yeah. The witch in the house. You just, uh, you should be, see, you're not doing what you're supposed to do. If you're a help meet, then his condition can be altered by your help. If you're a help meet. What does help mean? If I'm falling in the hole and Elder reached down and grabbed my hand and pulled me up, he got me out. That's help. That's what you're supposed to be to your husband. Help. Help him. I mean, but he's so jive. He was jive when you was dating him. That's what you picked. I know I'm preaching in here. You should be a prayer warrior for your house, for your children. Yeah, men pray too, but women, you the prayer warrior of the house. That's the problem. Women want to lead visibly in church. Want the microphone. They ain't prayed at home. Pastor, let me have a mic. I got, I got something to say. No, you say that in prayer. Why, you don't, why didn't you say that in the prayer closet? You don't have no prayer closet. The only thing in your prayer closet is shoes. You tripping over all kind of shoes and boots and clogs and heels. <laughs> you can't get in the prayer closet. You got what you wanted. <laughs> Pray for him. Amen. Don't you tell another person the business of your house. Don't you walk up to another woman in this church and tell her the business of your house. You tell God that in prayer. Prayer changes things. Be discreet and shut up. You talk too much. We got to walk around here and look at your husband all the time. Sometimes they're in leadership. I need to hear what you got to say. You disgruntled. Then once we get mad at him, y'all done made up. We going, we going to the Bahamas. We going on a trip. Going on a trip. We don't like him no more, remember? Good, turn the whole church against him and y'all all online uploading cruise pictures. Where they at? <laughs> and her heart doesn't slow down. My pressure up, her heart normal. Her pressure normal. Don't get people involved in that. I know I'm preaching. See, it would never make it online if preachers would preach it in the church. Preach it to your members. The problem is the preacher's uploading stuff. Y'all, I'm going to try this new ponytail out. What do you think? Let me know, members. <laughs> Pastor with a ponytail? Why you got a ponytail? Why you got anything with tail in the name on your head? I ain't got nothing on my body with tail in the name. Nothing. Can't nothing come close to me with tail in the name. And then asking the church, and nothing but women, yeah, ooh, rock that, pastor. Oh, that's tight. Oh, that's, that's it. See, if you need validation, you can't pastor. You can't pastor no church if you need validation from the members. You're not going to go against them and say what God said, ever. 
We don't need no punk pastors. Amen. Not in 2020, folks. We need some men that's going to stand up no matter what. Amen. Ain't nobody with a bun. Ain't no man with a bun going to stand up for nothing. Braids and bun, and they got the two little braids hanging right in. What was wrong with you? Look like your name is Teresa. See, I don't need this church for validation. I preach here because God gives me what to do here and led and, and, and called me to do this. But the church is not my validation. Amen. My wife and my children are my validation. That's it. That's what makes me a man. What makes me, what makes G. Craig a man is her right there clapping, him over there clapping, and where's the other one? On the camera, over there, working. That's what, that's what makes me a man. When they got a problem, that's when I got to, hey, we got to have a meeting. Something's wrong. Amen. It'll never get, I will never have braids and beads. It will never go that far. We're going to deal with that before I get in the beautician's chair for seven hours. What is a man doing four hours in a beautician's chair getting his hair done? Don't you have a job? You got to take off work to get your hair braided? Each bead is 10 minutes. And why you want your hair making a sound? Like a maraca. You just, we know when you come in. I, we know. It's foolishness. And what do women think? What do, what do, they be acting like they like it, but come on, women. There's no way. There's no way you can be waiting in the car for him to get ready. He's still in there counting beads. He got to have 15 on every strand. Every braid got to have 15. It's got to match. None can be higher than the other. And you got to wait on him. You waiting for him to put his bun together. Then he asks you to help. Can you wrap it for me? I really can't see back there. I said, okay, I'll wrap it with electric wire. And I'm going to plug it in the wall when I, when I, after I finish. I'm going to bake the bun. It's going to be a center bun when I get through. <laughs> Let me move on. But when you stand praying, when you stand praying, forgive. The Bible says when you stand praying, <laughs> well, y'all know I'm telling the truth. This, some of this stuff is just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. All that hurt. It's just ridiculous. Mark eleven twenty five. And when ye stand praying, do what? Forgive if you have aught against who? Any. Anybody. 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 So that means that if you make and post against folks, against your family, friends, whatever, then I know you're not praying. I know you're not praying. Because the Bible says before you pray, if you have aught against any, make sure you forgive. Let it go. So that your father, which is in heaven, is going to forgive you. So that means God is not going to forgive you with that on your heart. So you're making all that noise. We know it's not of God. This does not give others a pass when they break the law or commit some illegal act. But even then, call 911. Don't upload it. Call the cops. If it's illegal. Amen. However, when it comes to our personal feelings and emotions, we must operate in what? God's grace. And then we must seek. See, when you upload stuff, you're not seeking understanding. No. You're seeking an audience, not understanding. You missed the step. 
You need to seek understanding first rather than making it worse. Hebrews said, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any what? Root of bitterness springing up trouble you. Because if it starts troubling you and you don't seek understanding, seek, rest, uh, seek uh, reconciliation, then you're going to defile many. And that blood's going to be on your hands. Amen. We should never go to others before we go to the person we have an issue with. Amen. You go to the person you have issue with. Why did you post that and you ain't even talk to that person? Your mama didn't know you felt that way about her. You never told her, but you told the world. You told the world how you feel about your father. Well, I've just been feeling this for a long time. A long time and you never said anything? So you've been walking around here with a root of bitterness springing up. So how many people did you defile in the process of that? How many have you talked to? How many people have you gone to about that? And never came to the person you had an issue with. If we can't talk it over with them first, then we shouldn't talk about it to anyone else. Right. Amen. Talking to others first means you are only trying to turn people against someone and not truly trying to bring healing or rectify the situation. You don't want the situation right. You won't mess. I'm preaching in this place today. I'm stepping on toes. I hear old crusty toenails cracking. Yeah. Matthew 18 just spells it out. If thy brother shall trespass against thee, hurt you in any kind of way, go and tell him his fault between who? Thee and him alone. These are steps you can't skip. Amen? If he will hear thee, then thou hast gained thy brother. Meaning you've made it right. But if he will not hear thee, then take thee one or two more. That's not Facebook Live. Even though you only had one or two more watching you. Yeah, one or two more with thee, that out of the mouth of two or three witnesses everywhere may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the what? Look at somebody and say, the internet is not the church. Look at somebody and say, social media is not the church. That's the world. What? God would have said, take it to the world and let the world know. But he said, tell it unto the what? Church. The church. But if he neglect to hear the church, then let it be unto thee as a heathen man or a publican, meaning you're just done with him. You're done with him. You don't talk about it no more because if you keep talking about it, that means you're not over it. Oh, they just scrap it. Look at that. Internet fight. When it comes to family, close friends, confidants, etc., we should never be backstabbers or use online platforms to air out our private business with them. Amen. Somebody confided in you, you're a confidant, and you spill that to other people, God is gonna get you. I know things about people as a pastor that I can never say. Most of it, my wife don't know. But I keep it because I want God to trust me. Amen. I want to be rewarded by God and not punished by God. So I keep it. No matter what folks do to me, I ain't saying it. Yeah. But if people confide in you, God puts you in position.
to help somebody and they tell you things and you get angry and tell their business, that's going to cost you. It's going to cost you. And it's expensive. Social media is trying to get us to war with one another and stop us from praying for each other. Mark 14 and 11 says, and when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him Judas money. And he sought how he might conveniently betray him. Judas, for some money, betrayed Jesus. For an opportunity to fit in. He didn't fit in with the disciples. But he fit in with the rulers that came and met with him secretly. And for an opportunity, he thought it would be good to take that money, 30 pieces of silver. Summary. Oh, uh, yes, I preach today. I, I, I can do a little sad hand clap. I don't care. I know I preached. There people going to be limping out of here. <laughs> What's wrong? My, my toes hurt. But that's what, the, that's what the message is supposed to do. And we're supposed to learn from it and apply it. Amen? Yep, there's some posts you got to delete you had in the drafts. <laughs> All kind of drafts. Just drafts. What you was thinking. <laughs> delete it! The devil has turned brother against brother, mother against daughter, father against son, just as the Bible foretold. Family infighting is on the rise. Social media is the place where the offended go to spill their tea and enjoy the brief feeling of having strangers side with them. Brief. It's brief. But it doesn't last long. After you have shamed a loved one and hurt them, the thrill of doing it goes away and regret comes once God reminds you of your own faults and failures. Yeah. I can only imagine how Judas felt. Man, man. We cannot attack others and get away with it. We must speak the truth in love and be discreet with matters of the heart. We must realize that whatever we sow, we will reap. So we must always sow love and not discord. Amen. One of the main reasons people are so willing to attack one another and seek vengeance at their own hands is because they have lost confidence in prayer. You tell them to pray about it. Oh, no, I ain't doing that. That don't work. They don't say that, but that's what they mean. A lot of folk don't want to tell some, uh, 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 my wife stuff. They will tell somebody else so they can get all hyper spiritual because my wife going to give you a, sh a real short answer sometimes. Pray about it. Oh, here they go with the pray about it. She's going to tell you to pray about it. You know why she's going to tell you that? Because her prayers work. And that's what she does, and she gets results. She don't know that you're a part-time Christian and you ain't really saved. She don't know that. She think you're going to do what she does because you in here. She think you spiritual. She don't know you got a post ready. To upload. She's just going to tell you to pray. Because she has confidence in prayer. But those that don't have confidence in prayer. That's all you got. What else can I do? Can I keep preaching? Most do not believe prayer really works. And that they must take matters in their own hands. God isn't going to do this. I have to step in and handle this myself. You see, it's impossible to pray and get results if you don't want to see things turn out good for others. That's the what? You don't want to see things turn out good for them. That's why you can't pray. She tell you to pray. Oh. Yeah, you don't want to hear that. Because you really don't want to see things turn out good for them. It's hard to get before the Lord. Lord, just kill them. In the name of Jesus. 
like you did in the Old Testament. I need an Old Testament move of the Lord. God, the way you burn Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, and all 254 of them, Lord, you burn them up right there in front of everybody. Then you open the ground. God opened the ground and swallowed a house up. That car I don't like should have been mine. Swallow all them clothes up, God. Everything, all that, that her hair getting done, her beautician, swallow the salon up, God, because I can't go there. I wish my hair looked like that, but you, God, just get them. Old Testament style, in Jesus' name we pray. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> That's your prayer. That's why you can't pray. You can't go before God and say that. God, I need to see death. I need to see some death, God. This, this requires some death. Yeah, you can't go before God with that. So you got to take matters on your, in your own hands. And the Bible said you are a murderer with your tongue. So you typing stuff and uploading it as a murderer. Trying to kill somebody. Because you can't take that prayer to God. You're that mad. You're that angry. You see, it's impossible. I read that. You must desire to pray for good results for the person against you in order for prayer to work. So you pray for you. God, help my heart, help my mind. And then you pray for them. God, I don't, I don't want nothing bad to happen to them, God. Let them understand what's going on. Open the door. Help us to reconcile. Something. But you got to be able to pray good results for them in order for you to get good results. Hey. Amen. So before you make that post, Record that video or go on that live. Pray, remember, and repent. Pray that you are handling things the way God instructed. That'll get most videos, posts, and stuff deleted. Yeah, you, you won't even get past that one. But remember the love you had for this person and repent for your own error and the times you may have hurt others. Once you get that posture, this will give you the posture that you need to mend the situation with a clean heart and not allow the enemy to get any glory from you. Amen? Proverbs 17 and 14. The beginning of strife or issues is as when water first trickles from a crack in a dam. And the beginning when the water first trickles from the crack in a dam. Therefore, stop contention before it becomes worse and quarreling breaks. Out. Can you stop it before it gets worse? Amen. Everyone stand to your feet. Yeah, this was a good message to me. Amen. This was a, this was a toe stepper. I just get tired of going online and seeing somebody get mad at this one, beef with this one, beef, 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 angry, just, and just posting it like people care. Like, you know, you'd be like, man, why would they say that? That's their mama. Why would they say that? That's their cousin. Why would they say that? They grew up together. Why would they say that? I just saw them. They was cool. I mean, what? Man, this is a demon from hell. Pushing people to not get along. Amen? But right now, I'm going to open the altar up for that prayer part. That we can fall in love with praying. And we can pray before we act and react. So if you need prayer for that, just come on up. That God will strengthen that part of you. So your reaction will be prayer. God, I want it to be prayer. When I feel a way. I remember what my mama didn't do, my daddy did, what somebody did. Lord, I, when I remember that, man, I don't want to just let it out like water. I want to pray. I want to come to God with it.
God, help me be a better human person, Christian, so that I don't let things out. Against my own husband, against my own wife, against my children, against my mother or my father. It's nobody's business. Against my friend. Against the person I said I loved. Against the person that say they love me. Because I felt rejected. Because they made me feel less than. I'm going to destroy them. No. God help me to pray. In these situations, help me to pray. Help me to seek the true source of answers. Hallelujah. Everyone, just bow your heads. And this might be a tough message, man, because some of y'all may have really been done wrong. Somebody really, really hurt you, targeted you, did something. Somebody you loved and cared about. Well, Lord, help me think about the love. Help me think about the care. Help me think about the good. Help me think about, Father God, the good times with this person. Yeah, they may have got off. Yeah, they may have done wrong. But, Father, so have I. So help me focus on the good. The good. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. Thank you for this message. You told us to not avenge ourselves. We should not be our own defense attorneys. We should not defend ourselves and prove ourselves and debate with others about ourselves and go back and forth answering a fool's opinion of us. Father God, we shouldn't, but we should be discreet and use discretion. Be silent like Jesus. Jesus never defended himself. He didn't say anything because he knew who he was and he knew what he had to do. So God, help us know who we are in you and what we have to do. And help us to handle things in prayer. Come on, everyone, lift your hands that came up. Help us to handle things, Lord, in prayer. Give us a prayer anointing. Father God, give us a prayer passion. Father God, give us fortitude to pray. God, make prayer our first reaction, our first solution, our first endeavor. No matter what we're going through, no matter what people say and do, no matter what we see, give us a heart to pray and take it to you first in Jesus' name. Help us to pray. And Father God, we will trust you with our business, our cares, our concerns. We will discreetly talk to you to get the help we need and not allow the spirit of this world through social media to manipulate us and use us against our brothers and sisters. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and hug somebody and tell them, I'm going to pray first. I'm going to pray first. I'm going to pray first. Remember, wives, you are prayer warriors. You got your badge today. You are prayer warrior. You have to be. You have to be. We're going to pray first. We're going to be a praying church. Thank God. We had 440 people at prayer this past Wednesday night. And to see that every third Wednesday when we pray, people just want to be here. We had 200 people or so on Zoom. But 440 members come in the church. In our age group, most of y'all 30, somewhere around there, coming out for prayer that's amazing let's get results with these prayers amen believe in the power of 
prayer. Amen.